for my great challenge welcome back to my channel and another vintage recipe this one sounds horrendous I can't wait to try it I can't even tell you how old it is but it seems to be like from the 30s I don't know why that number came out okay it's called the magic chocolate no magic tomato chocolate cake I, uh, hey, tomatoes are fruit, so why not? I had to try it. So I had it on my Facebook uh, saved uh, stuff for a long time. And I keep on seeing it, you know, popping back. It's, yeah, magic tomato soup cake. Here, take a, a screenshot if you want. Um, I don't know. Clickamericana.com is the one that posted it. Um, it's, it looks really good. It, it really does. It's a black and white picture. Uh, but basically, it's uh, a chocolate cake. Well, the chocolate is on the outside. It's mostly spices, um, clove, cinnamon, nutmeg, but it's the ubiquitous tomato soup can from Campbell. I can't wait to try this. That sounds horrendous and delicious at the same time. So uh, let's go through the ingredients first for the cake. Then we'll do the uh, frosting. But the reason why I wanted to do this is because, hold on, can you see it? Okay, so a lot of you have asked me, uh, well, not asked, but told me that I should get a mixer, a, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, stand mixer. I can't afford one, guys. But I can afford seven bucks at the Goodwill. And I found this, and I love it. <laughs> it's. It is so retro. Uh, this is a Sunbeam. I'm going to give you a close up, don't worry. It's a Sunbeam um, Mix Master. And I did some research on it. Uh, you can use it as uh, part of the stand or you can use it, you know, manually. Okay. It's number M12. And they made this particular model between 1967 and 1972. So it's basically Scott and I's age. Um, it's over 50 years old. Well, almost 50 years old. Can you imagine? It still works, look. It still works. Um, the only thing that wasn't working very good was that it, it doesn't turn very well. So I oiled um, the stuff at the bottom right here. That got all oiled, and so we'll see if it's uh, really turning when I cream my butter and sugar. And then the bowl is in perfect condition. It's Fire King, and I am missing the bowl that goes inside. There was supposed to be a little milk glass uh, bowl, but anyway. All right, let me give you close-ups because this thing is just phenomenal. I love it. Come on now, seven bucks, six ninety-nine exactly, and it looks brand new. Here's a close-up on the Sunbeam logo and the top part here. So what can you do with this? All right, you can do stirring, folding, blending, puddings, quick breads, mixing. And then the other one is cake mix, creaming, frosting, beating, whipping, and egg whites. It's got 12 speeds. So again, it's on a stand, okay? I don't know if there is any more accessories that came with it. Uh, you can eject right here, just like the other one. And the dial is there. Now, the older, older models, the wheel was right here. Oh, man, I wish I had one of those. But anyway, so when you're working on it or with it you put the bowl this way and then when you want to store it this thing just keeps popping out i've tried it once already i made one cake and it worked uh you put this in the middle so that way it takes less room right anyway <laughs> i love it i think this is really cool and look at that it's it's uh green so it goes well with my kitchen so we're gonna make a cake using this Hopefully it will work. Um, if it doesn't, I will we'll help it work. So what are the ingredients for the magic tomato chocolate cake? You need two tablespoons of butter, one cup of granulated sugar, two cups of cake flour. I didn't even know there was such a thing as cake flour. This is Swan's Down 
America's favorite cake flour since 1894. So you need two cups of that. Uh, you need one can of tomato soup, of course. In here, I have a quarter of a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of baking soda. And here are the spices, one tablespoon of each. So we have one tablespoon of cinnamon, one tablespoon of cloves, and one tablespoon of nutmeg. And this color is just beautiful. Yes, all right, let's get started. So first things first, I'm supposed to cream the sugar uh, with the butter. So we're gonna put this back on the right side and hopefully it will turn properly. So let me start by putting my sugar in there. I'm so excited. <laughs> and we're gonna put the uh, butter in there. I never had a stand mixer. I know that some of you have had one your entire life, the fancy stuff. Um, I never had one. Um, so I'm trying to start making recipes that actually require it. So I'm trying to see if this is something that I actually want to invest in. But quite frankly, if this one works, right? And it worked the last time, I just had to help it a little bit. Um, if this one works, what's the point of getting a new one? Okay, so put that in there and you notice that I'm on the side, right? I think the new one stays central and it's the head that turns. I I'm not sure, I don't have one. Okay, and over here it says creaming, eight. All right, wish me luck. Let's see if it's gonna cream. No good, it's not creaming. <laughs> it's not creaming. That's all right, I'll do it by hand. Um, I know this is gonna be a, a part of it, why it's gonna work. So I'm just gonna do this by hand. You know, now that I think of it, I'm wondering if the creaming would work better in that missing bowl that I have. But anyway, all right, I creamed it by hand because it was not enough stuff inside the bowl to get it to move. Um, but I still love it. All right, what's next? Okay, so next we're going to add the tomato soup. into the bowl. Start mixing it a little bit. And as it's mixing, I'm going to start adding my dry ingredients. This is only the second time I ever use a stand mixer. I don't really know how they work, but uh, it, it's turning on its own now. You saw that, right? So obviously it's got to have volume in it. Okay. So now what do you do with this? Um, like really, what do you do with this? Okay. Let's see. I'm, I'm going to sound like an idiot to most of you who have had the fancy stuff all this time. Um, because this is second nature to you, but imagine like I'm, I'm like the uh, uh, I'm like the 1940s, 1950s housewife who just got herself a stand mixer for the first time in her life on Christmas, and <laughs> I'm excited about it. I'm excited about this. It does work. You see, it work right, but obviously, I don't know. Um, I guess the new ones are better because it's the head that turns, not the ball. This one, the ball has to, um, you know, has to have charge, like a lot of stuff in it. 
Uh, okay, what do you do with this? You go like this, maybe? It smells weird. <laughs> Tomato and spices. It smells like... Uh, it smells like I'm making pizza. <laughs> this is exciting. I gotta figure out a better way to do this. There's gotta be some kind of gadget or gizmo to do this. Okay. All right, let's give it one final stir. All right, now, greased pan, and that goes in the oven for up to 60 minutes. And while that's in the oven, I'm gonna make the chocolate. And of course, we are cooking in corningware today. Okay, a well-greased pan. There you go. So Willie already found out that this tomato in the chocolate cake. And it's like, mom, they aren't right. What if it's delicious? Don't knock it until you try it. Okay, let's put that in. You know, I just realized there's no egg in this recipe. I guess the tomato sauce is there for that. Have you ever heard of anyone replacing eggs with uh, applesauce? So, maybe that's what the tomato sauce is for. One hour at 350 degrees. I have about nine minutes left on the cake. Uh, and it does smell really, really good right now. I'm going to do the frosting. Uh, for the frosting you need three ounces of uh, cream cheese for those of you who are in Europe Neuchâtel uh, cheese you need a half a teaspoon of salt three cups of confectioner sugar or powdered sugar this is three tablespoon of milk one tablespoon of vanilla extract and about four big squares like this of dark chocolate, which I'm going to melt. So what I'm going to do this time around is put this bowl inside the large one and pretend I have uh, the missing bowl. So let's see if it works. I put that. This goes here. Yep, that should work. Okay, so first things first is beat the cream cheese. Let's see. Aha! It works! So what I'm missing is the little bowl. Definitely have to go and purchase it. So now that this is done, I'm going to add uh, my um, confectioner's sugar and the milk, uh, and then I'll end the salt, and then I'll start adding the liquid ingredients, including the chocolate, and I'm going to put that in a microwave so that it can uh, melt a little bit. figure out how to uh, work this thing but let me tell you this gotta be um, oh man mmm this is good okay so obviously I need the small bowl I'm gonna finish this off 
this way. Oh, this is so good. Mm. Oh, wow. This is really, really good. Okay, I like having a stand mixer, okay? I just gotta learn how to use it. Um, obviously, there's, uh, there's a method. <laughs> I gotta figure it out. Um, this is only my second time using it and um, let me move the camera up so I don't have to hunch over. Uh, so very obviously I got to learn how to use the uh, stand mixer. That's the cake. Um, but I really like it. What a difference it makes in terms of texture. Mm, this is really good. So I just checked on my cake and it looks like it needs uh, another 5 minutes, 10 minutes. It not tastes like pumpkin pie. You don't taste the tomato at all. Oh, this is going to be really good. It tastes just like pumpkin pie. Mmm. Okay, let me work on the um, unfortunate chocolate that got stuck with the uh, the battery, <laughs> the beaters. Um, this poor chocolate. Some something's gonna happen to it. Uh, it looks like I'm going to eat it. Because I have a little bit too much. All right, when I come back, um, the cake will be unmolding and then we'll put the uh, chocolate frosting over it and then we'll get the boys, all three of them, to try it. It looks pretty good if you ask me. So, um, I'm going to turn it the other way around. There we go. Okay, so here's the cake. I'm gonna let it cool a little bit and then I'll add this amazing, amazing frosting. Um, the reason why I want it to cool a little bit because if I start putting the frosting on the cake that's really really hot What's gonna happen is gonna start melting and I want to be able to just cover it nicely so in a bit I have to say, <laughs> this smells really, really good. Okay, let's get the crew over and uh, we're going to try this cake. So first slice. So you can see what it looks like on the inside. It's not too red. Well, unfortunately, Edward is uh, in an online class, so what do you have to say? Tomato and chocolate, not right? It's, it does not sound right. Okay, we'll try when, it. When is this recipe from? I think it's from the 30s. From the 30s? Yeah. So somebody heard that, uh, that they tried peanut butter and chocolate and they said, hey, I got a wacky idea. Yeah, right. Well, you know what? I don't know. I, I don't know how it came about. He's 14 tomorrow. Cool. How is it? Kind of tastes like pumpkin pie. Doesn't it? Yeah, it kind of does. Do you taste the tomato? A no. little. Not at all, right? No, not really. I think that's because you put tomato soup, which has like a bunch of different flavors in it. That's true. So, we're not knocking it right because it just has tomato in it. Hi, Gaff. You can. <laughs> Sorry. I gotta try it. Where's my fork? Really like this. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, I gotta try it. All right. 
I think this cake is going to be gone. I think I got the heel, and that's why mine is a little, little tougher. To yeah, yeah, I gave you the heel. Okay. That's probably why. Mm. I thought it was from the butt. It's very sweet. It's very sweet. How do you like the frosting? Frosting is delicious. Mm. But I'm not a fan of frosting, you know that. But that's I know different. it's terrible. Why don't you give me yours? I'll take care yeah, of it. Yeah, take, take the whole thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I would make it with two cups of sugar, not three. But otherwise, it tastes like pumpkin bread. Yeah, it does. You don't taste the tomato at all. This is really good. Is there a big mess in the back? Yeah. Ooh. Big mess in the back, sorry. Um, messes are natural. That's right. Messes are natural. Listen to the expert here. Should I make it again? If you want to. <laughs> okay. I take it that's a no? No, that's a yes, but it's a maybe. We'll maybe. Call. Okay. Should I make it again? I like it. He likes it. No. Okay. I like it, but too much sugar. I, I wasn't expecting to like it. Not at all? I figured tomato and, and chocolate just wasn't going to work. But. It doesn't sound like it would work. No, right? No, yeah. See, that's what I've been saying. Don't knock it until you try it. It tastes very good, but it is very sweet. So this is definitely not a bread. It's definitely a cake. Um, I like it a lot, and I will make it again. Now, what would I do? Less sugar and maybe less uh, clove. Wait, this was intended to be a bread? No, it's a cake. Oh. It's called a magic tomato chocolate cake. And it's very good. Okay, I give this recipe a A- minus because of the sweetness and too much clove. So if you're gonna make it, lower the sugar amount and instead of a tablespoon of cloves, maybe put a half a tablespoon. Oh, um, sweet. I just got a big chunk of chocolate. Oh, you didn't melt fully? All right. That's all right by me. Yeah, okay. Sweet, all right. Uh, sweetness is subjective, so really it's just like whichever amount you want. You know what? I haven't been eating a lot of sugar lately, so that's probably why. Same thing with uh, salt. If something's got salt in it, because I don't eat salt, I detect the salt right away. And I guess sugar. Do you think it's too sweet? Oh, no. Huh? No. No. Okay. So <laughs> make it with three cups of sugar then. Um, was it three cups? I can't remember. No, it was just one cup of sugar. Wow. Okay. Yeah, start eating sugar. Yeah. Ooh, one cup of sugar is too much for me. Um, anyway, I like the recipe and I hope you enjoyed it too and will try it. I say try it. Don't knock it until you try it. This is actually really good. I enjoy it. I'm going to get a, um, a slice upstairs for Edward and I guess I will see you next time. So give me a thumbs up if you like this review and this recipe. Uh, I will learn to use the uh, stand mixer. I, I just got to learn how to use it. I'm, I'm not, you know, this is my second time using a stand mixer. So give me some time. I got to finagle the whole idea of the smaller bowl inside. How old is that thing? It's your age. Oh, right. It's between 67 and 72. Um, so I like it so far. I mean, it does splatter a lot. So, so give me a thumbs up if you like this recipe. Don't forget to subscribe right here in the corner. Find me at my great challenge on Instagram and Facebook and I will see you again um, probably for another recipe. Who knows? I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching you guys. Bye! Hey, it's me and guess what? Click that thumbs up if you really like this video. Thumbs down twice if you didn't. You can also share my video if you really, really liked it or save it to watch later. Also, you can subscribe to my channel but don't forget to click that bell button so you are always notified when I post a new video. Thank you for watching.